What is up my dudes, it's Pac-Man here and today I'm bringing you guys my personal guide and training routine that allowed me to go from having less than 15 hours total game time to being a high plat one, scrimming against pro teams and pushing for Challenger League all within four and a half months of starting playing. Because in the end of the day, it's not all about how long you've played for or how much time you put in. It's also about training efficiently and doing the things that are gonna bring you the most success. So before we jump in, a quick disclaimer. At the time when I rose through the siege ranks, I was streaming and playing full time, which is part of the reason as to why I was able to get to that standard so fast. But that is definitely not to say you can't do it too, even if you only have a few hours a day to put in. When you approach improvement in the right way, there is no stopping how far you can go and how quickly you can get there. So for this video, I'm gonna be focusing solely on how I got there, what my training routine looked like, and how I was able to sustain my improvement over long hours of play. I'm gonna assume that everyone watching this video has a solid understanding of the basics of Siege and is looking to improve further from where they're currently at. Siege is an absolutely massive game with a very steep learning curve. And for that reason, I can't go into depth on every facet you need to learn to become a more rounded player. However, in the next couple of weeks, I will be starting a fully updated Siege Academy series where I'm gonna bring you through all the basics and fundamentals, advanced principles, and map and operator breakdowns. So if that's something you would want to see, or if you enjoy this video, please guys, smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, it really helps out a ton and I appreciate it more than you know. All right guys, let's get straight into it. The first thing I would do when hopping on at the beginning of the day is do some warm up and aim training. So before hopping into any public lobby, I would without fail, always warm up between 30 minutes and one hour in terrorist hunt. Doing this simple task over and over at the beginning of every session allowed me to build muscle memory, learn to control recoil of certain guns, and train myself to position my crosshair at head height at all times. What this also done was warm up my shot and movement so that when I actually jumped into a game, I could focus on my positioning and tactics and not be let down by missing a shot I would usually always hit. Guys, I would highly recommend going into your settings, go to matchmaking preferences, and under the terrorist hunt section, turn off all game modes aside from terrorist hunt classic. I would then scroll down and turn off every single map aside from house. Um, you can also turn on protect hostage. This is basically just gonna give you access to the defender gun. You're gonna be defending the hostage rather than attacking. Um, I usually didn't bother with this, but that part's up to you. I didn't stick to any specific routine when I was warming up in Terrorist Hunt. I would kind of do whatever I wanted to do at that point in time. Sometimes I'd just try and one tap with an ACOG. Sometimes I'd try and full auto control with a reflex. Um, sometimes I'd walk around ADS with a pistol. There's there's a plenty of things you can do. Just, just try and keep yourself warmed up, keep yourself challenged, and uh, yeah, try and work on the skill. So the next thing I would do is I would skip casual and go straight to solo queue ranked. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is my training routine um, and it worked for me within a pretty incredibly short period of time. I personally don't see any value in playing quick matches or casual or whatever you want to call it. I think it reinforces bad habits, rewards poor plays, and it's just generally a waste of time. Instead, I would spend that time playing ranked as a solo. Even when you have a team to play with that you play with every day, playing ranked as a solo or in a duo forces you to work on your individual plays and exposes you to other play styles that you may not encounter by just playing with the same team every day. I spent a good two hours every single day smashing out solo queue um, and some days if my team wasn't on I would spend the entire day playing solo queue. I truly feel that it added a lot to my game and made me a lot more confident with my individual plays and game sense when I was playing with my team. So straight from solo queue I would join up with my team and get into some ranked matches. Um, quick side note, it goes without saying one of the most important factors in regards to improving in Siege is to find a good team or just a group of individuals who you can play with and uh, learn and grow off each other. There are plenty of ways to find a team or people to play with including joining discords like or 6 ANZ within Australia, the official Rainbow Six Siege Discord or other individual discords run by tournament providers from the US. Uh, but this video isn't about finding a team so for the purpose of this video I'm going to assume that you have a team or a group of people to play with. So after smashing out some T-Hunt and some solo queue, I would at that point usually party up with some of the other members of my team. At this point, it was really time for us to focus on team-orientated siege, communication, sticking to specific roles, and working as a unit towards one objective. Playing as a team definitely lifts your game and allows you to master one specific role within a team. Playing ranked matches as a team before playing in scrims or tournaments is a good way to warm up the team synergy and build team chemistry. I would also like to make a quick side note on the team you play for. I would highly recommend not being the best player in your team. 
as at this point, it's very likely that you're going to be the one that's teaching other members around you rather than learning and growing for yourself. I'm not saying you should hop from team to team whenever you get the chance, but I do, however, feel that once you start to outgrow your teammates, you should be looking to take that next step. That's my personal opinion anyways. So after playing some ranked matches as a team, we would hop into some scrims and tournaments. This, in my opinion, was the number one reason as to why I improved as fast as I did. Playing competitively allowed me to play against a higher caliber of player than I could just playing ranked. Think about it, if you're a gold one and all you do is play ranked, the only caliber of player you're going to come up against is those in the same skill level, a gold one or a plat three or a gold two. However, by playing competitively and joining ladders and tournaments with your team, you get to skip the ranks and play against some really solid players in much higher ranks. This forces you to adopt to their level of playing and punishes mistakes you otherwise might get away with in lower ranks. Scrimming and playing in tournaments such as the weekly go for is in my personal opinion the fastest way to improve. Now with that being said, I would wait until you have at least 200 hours of gameplay and have been playing with the same team for at least a few weeks. This way at least you will understand how you are being killed and what they are doing to be so much better, otherwise it's pointless. Some people definitely are going to disagree with that and say you, you must commit rank and learn the game inside and out, be a minimum plat 2 and above before playing competitively. I disagree completely. I did it, it worked for me, and in the end of the day, when the goal is improvement, losing does not matter. So when I was done with scrims or the tournament for the night, I would head back and review my clips from the day. Now, for me, that, that part was easy as I had to go through large amounts of my stream footage in order to get clips to use for my videos, so every night I had to go through my gameplay and find good moments anyway. Uh, although it took me a little while to notice, I actually found that rewatching my gameplay allowed me to see areas that I needed to improve upon that I may not have noticed during the heat of the moment. For example, things like holding one angle for too long, uh, over committing and getting a kill, like after getting a kill, um, lack of droning, crosshair placement, uh, anything, anything. By reviewing my own gameplay over and over, I was forced to rewatch my mistakes. This allowed me to pick up on bad behaviors where I would then put in a conscious effort to try and fix. I would highly recommend to anyone who has never reviewed their own footage, uh, start making it a habit. It's going to increase your sense of awareness and overall gameplay massively. So when I was done playing for the day and reviewing my clips, I would then turn to my research, as some people might call it. <laughs> uh, for me, it was really what I did to wind down without wasting too much time. When I was just starting out, I would spend my time watching channels like mine or Varsity Gaming to learn more about the nuances of Siege. Once I felt like I had most of the game's content learned, I started to watch the best do it and tried to emulate their play styles. People like Pengu, Bolo, Noted or other players similar. Picking up on the way they approached situations, how they played certain roles and certain bomb sites really added some layers to my game. I would also try to keep up with most of the Pro League matches so that I could see how the best teams in the world were defending bomb sites, attacking, droning and what operators they were playing. Learning from people who know more is key to successful improvement. Okay, so just to finish off the video, I wanted to give you guys a couple of tips to improve a little bit faster. Number one, try your best not to get angry or tilted. Remember, Siege has a very steep learning curve and it's gonna take you a little bit of time to catch up, especially when jumping into competitive play for the first time, so go easy on yourself. And number two, take responsibility and don't blame others. This is an absolutely huge one. If you spend your time blaming other people for why you died rather than taking responsibility, you're simply not gonna improve. Take the time to think, what could I have done better? Was my positioning correct? Was I communicating with my team efficiently? Taking that sort of a mindset is gonna lead to much faster overall improvement. So there you have it guys. Those are the exact steps that I took to go from having zero experience to being a strong competitive player in less than four and a half months. And I promise you, if you follow that routine and you wanna improve bad enough, you will see very, very similar growth. So if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more content just like this, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments what video you want to see next. I appreciate you guys more than you know, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.